Welcome to Module 4 of the ICO's Data Protection and PECA Training. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand the requirements of Article 9, know where to find conditions for processing special category data, and understand how the conditions are applied in practice. This module attempts to cover the key points, but it is really important that you refer to the guidance and the legislation for more detail. There is also further information in your notes. Remember, you can pause this module at any time to look at the legislation or even to take a moment to absorb the information. Special categories of data are listed in Article 9 of the UK GDPR. These are data concerning racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious or philosophical beliefs, trade union membership, genetic data, biometric data when used for identification purposes. This might involve using facial recognition technology or fingerprint scanning to identify an individual health data, physical or mental, and data concerning an individual's sexual life or orientation. In order to give this data extra protection, processing is prohibited unless certain conditions apply. There are 10 conditions listed in Article 9. These are listed A to J. We will discuss these conditions and how they work in this module. They divide into two groups. The first group is A and C to F. These conditions are all complete as they stand in the UK GDPR. The second group is B and G to J. These conditions refer to processing authorised by or on the basis of UK law. This means that for these conditions, we have to go to the DPA to find that authorisation or basis in UK law. We will discuss both these groups of conditions, but let's discuss conditions A and C to F first. These conditions are grouped together because they are complete as they stand in the UK GDPR. They cover, in summary, a. Explicit consent. C. Vital interests. D. Certain types of processing by a not-for-profit organisation. E. Data which has manifestly been made public by placing it in the public domain. And F. Processing necessary for the exercise or defence of legal claims. We will look at each of these in turn. But before we do, you could take a moment to pause this module and look at the text of these five conditions in Article 9. The first condition in Article 9 is A, explicit consent. Explicit consent is not defined, but is not very different from the usual high standard of consent, so it must be freely given and involve a specific, informed, and unambiguous indication of the individual's wishes. The key difference is that explicit consent must be affirmed in a clear expressed statement of consent. This can be oral or written. Let's consider some examples. In module one, we discussed my gym asking me for consent to process my health data. Remember, a controller must always have an Article 6 lawful basis for processing. In these circumstances, this might be consent. Because health data is special category data, the gym will also need an Article 9 condition for processing. The most appropriate condition is explicit consent. The gym membership form has a section which explicitly states I agree to it processing my health details should I require medical help. I sign it to clearly signal my agreement. In this example, there is a clear link between the Article 6 lawful basis consent and the Article 9 condition for processing explicit consent. 
but we will see that this is not always the case with the other special category conditions. Let's look at another example. The gym now wants to take a biometric fingerprint from me and then use this to grant me access to the facilities. Because it is proposing the processing of biometric data for the purposes of identification, it needs an Article 9 condition for processing, as well as the usual Article 6 lawful basis. The GIM therefore asks me for my explicit consent to process this biometric data. The membership form has a section which explicitly states I agree to the gym processing my biometric data to identify me. This consent should be clearly separate to the consent to process my medical details. They should not be bundled together. Remember though that consent must be freely given. If I am given no choice in the matter, this might not be the case. Therefore, the gym must offer an alternative means of entry which is not detrimental to me in any way. A swipe card would be an acceptable alternative. The vital interests condition might be applicable if a controller needs to process special category data in order to protect the vital interests of an individual in situations where they are incapable of giving consent. This almost exactly mirrors the vital interests basis for processing in Article 6. Remember, this is a matter of life and death. For example, processing to enable the treatment of an unconscious traffic accident victim. The Article 9 condition states that this only applies if the data subject is physically or legally incapable of giving consent. The not-for-profit condition is designed for use for not-for-profit bodies, for example, charities, clubs, political parties, churches, trade unions and other associations. All the organisations must have a political, philosophical or religious aim. A charity will be considered to have a philosophical aim if it aims to help people for social reasons, for example, if it helps the homeless. The condition is aimed at organisations managing their membership and processing their members' personal data for administrative purposes. The condition does not permit disclosure of personal data outside that body without the consent of the data subjects. As an example, a not-for-profit charity supporting refugees would be able to use this condition. It is an organisation with religious and philosophical aims. It might process the personal data of the refugees if they have regular contact with the charity and are being supported by it. The data might include special category data if the charity records whether a migrant has a particular medical condition which affects this support. The charity might rely on legitimate interests as it Article 6 lawful basis for processing and its Article 9 condition could be not-for-profit. If it is relying on this condition, it is not able to disclose this data to any third party. If the data subject manifestly makes their special category data public, then it may be possible to rely on this condition to process that particular data. The controller must be confident that it was the individual themselves who actively chose to make their data public and that this was unmistakably a deliberate act on their part. For example, an MP who has stated their political views in a published leaflet has manifestly made this data public. An organisation might reproduce this data in a blog and rely on this condition for processing. The legal claims or judicial acts condition may apply if the controller can demonstrate that it is necessary to process special category data in order to establish, exercise or defend legal claims, or if it is a court acting in its judicial capacity. 
It includes processing necessary for actual or prospective court proceedings, obtaining legal advice, or establishing, exercising, or defending legal rights in any other way. For example, a child falls off a horse at a riding stable and breaks their arm. The stable records details of the injury and makes a record of what happened. Although there is no actual or expected court claim, the purpose is to establish that the stable fulfilled its duty of care to the child and to defend against any prospective personal injury claims. The Article 6 lawful basis might be legitimate interests and the Article 9 condition might be legal claims. So we've now looked at five Article 9 conditions for processing, conditions A and C to F. Let's now look at conditions B and G to J, which work in a different way. These five conditions cover processing necessary for B, employment and social security and social protection, G, substantial public interest, H, health and social care, I, public health, and J, archiving research and statistical purposes. We will look at each of these in turn, but before we do, you could take a moment to pause this module and look at the text of these five conditions in Article 9. They all refer to processing authorised by or on the basis of UK law. So we have seen that these five conditions require authorisation or a basis in UK law. This means we must refer to the DPA and the relevant section is in part two, chapter two. Section 10, subsection two, tells us that processing for reasons covered in B, H, I or J of article nine of the UK GDPR must meet a condition in part one, schedule one of the DPA. Condition G, substantial public interest is not covered here. We will come back to this shortly. So let's remove it from our list and look at what part one schedule one has to say about the remaining four. Schedule one part one of the DPA provides four separate conditions for this processing in four separate paragraphs. There is one paragraph for each of the article nine conditions we have just identified. B, H, I and J. We will look at them in turn, but first take a moment to pause this module and take a look at section 10 and schedule one part one in the DPA. So now we will look at each of the four schedule one paragraphs in turn with an example for each. Paragraph one concerns processing for employment, social security and social protection purposes. This says that the processing is necessary for the purposes of performing or exercising obligations or rights which are imposed or conferred by law on the controller or the data subject in connection with employment, social security or social protection. The controller must be able to identify the relevant law. Let's look at an example. An employer recording the number of days an employee has been absent due to sickness might rely on this condition for processing the health data. It has a legal obligation in connection with employment law and the payment of statutory sick pay to do this. So this provides the Article 6 lawful basis for processing. And it also means it can apply the Article 9 employment, social security and social protection condition with reliance on Schedule 1, Paragraph 1. The employer must identify the specific legal obligation imposed by law.
Schedule 1, paragraph 2 concerns processing for health or social care purposes. The condition lists the purposes of the processing it is relevant to. Paragraph 2 also goes on to outline conditions and safeguards regarding obligations of secrecy which are required. For example, a doctor may process the health data of a patient to provide a medical diagnosis. The Article 6 lawful basis for processing might be legitimate interests. The Article 9 condition is health or social care purposes with reliance on Schedule 1, Paragraph 2. The doctor has a professional obligation of secrecy. Schedule 1, Paragraph 3 concerns processing for reasons of public health. Confidentiality is a key safeguard when relying on this condition. Organisations must make sure that they are able to demonstrate that they will owe a duty of confidentiality to the individuals whose data they are processing. For example, if an organisation is processing health data to monitor an epidemic or pandemic, this is likely to be the relevant condition. The processing must be necessary for reasons of public interest in the area of public health. The Article 6 lawful basis for processing might be legitimate interests or public task. The Article 9 condition is public health with reliance on Schedule 1, Paragraph 3. The organisation must owe a duty of confidentiality to the individuals whose data it is processing. Schedule 1, paragraph 4, concerns processing necessary for archiving, research or statistical purposes. There are safeguards and restrictions for this processing set out in Article 89 of the UK GDPR and Section 19 of the DPA. For example, a controller should consider anonymisation or pseudonymisation of the data and must be able to demonstrate that the processing is not likely to cause damage or distress to the individuals. For example, this condition might be used where a hospital wishes to process a patient's medical data as part of a clinical trial. In accordance with clinical trials regulations, the hospital will ask the patients for their informed consent to take part in the trial, but it will use the scientific research condition to actually process the personal data. This means that even if the patient drops out of the trial, the data already collected can continue to be used. The Article 6, lawful basis for processing might be public task, the Article 9 condition is scientific research with reliance on Schedule 1, Paragraph 4. We've now looked at four of the Article 9 conditions which require authorisation or a basis in UK law. Conditions B, H, I and J. And we've looked at DPA Part 1, Schedule 1 where we found a corresponding paragraph for each of these four conditions. We also saw that it was section 10 of the DPA which told us these conditions were in part one of schedule one. But remember, this list does not include the fifth condition, G, substantial public interest. So let's now look at this. Point G, processing for reasons of substantial public interest, is addressed separately. And if we look at section 10, subsection 3 here, it tells us that for condition G, the processing must meet a condition in part 2 of Schedule 1. And part 2 contains 23 different substantial public interest conditions to choose from. The 23 Schedule 1 Part 2 Substantial Public Interest Conditions are listed in your module notes and are also found in the guidance. They are set out in paragraphs 6 to 28 
of Schedule 1, Part 2 of the DPA. Remember, these are the possible conditions a controller can rely on when applying Article 9, 2G, Substantial Public Interest. Here are some examples we often get asked about. Paragraph 6, Statutory and Government Purposes. 8, Equality of Opportunity or Treatment. Paragraph 10, Preventing or Detecting Unlawful Acts. 17, Counselling. And paragraph 18, Safeguarding of Children and Individuals at Risk. They are wide ranging and the controller must choose which one is applicable and look at the provisions to see how each one works. Many are very specific and relevant to particular processing or a category of data. We'll have a look at a couple of examples which show how paragraphs 6 and 8 work. But first, take a moment to pause this module and look at Article 9 2G in the UK GDPR and also Section 10 and Schedule 1 Part 2 in the DPA. Have a look at the 23 substantial public interest conditions in Part 2 and in particular read paragraphs 6 and 8. So paragraph 6 provides a condition for processing for statutory and government purposes. These purposes are listed in subparagraph 2. Subparagraph 2a refers to the exercise of a function conferred on a person by an enactment or rule of law. To rely on this, the controller must be able to identify the specific enactment or law which confers the function. The other purpose is the exercise of a function of the Crown, a Minister of the Crown or a Government Department. In both cases, in order to rely on this condition, the controller must be able to identify the function in question. At subsection 1b, the condition states the processing must be necessary for reasons of substantial public interest. This is specified by many of the conditions and means the controller must explain why the specific processing is necessary for the public interest. This covers a wide range of values and principles relating to the public good or what is in the best interests of society. Our guidance discusses this further and there is a table showing which conditions require the controller to show their substantial public interest arguments. Let's look at an example. A public authority with a function to protect the public might use this condition. For example, the health and safety executive may have a function to undertake inspections at an industrial site to assess chemical emissions and may need to process health information to perform this function. The HSE is exercising a function which has a basis in law. It must be able to identify the relevant law. It must also explain why the processing is necessary for reasons of substantial public interest. The same basis in law means public tasks can be applied as the Article 6 lawful basis for processing. The HSE can apply Article 9 2G Substantial Public Interest with reliance on Paragraph 6 Statutory and Government Purposes for the Processing. There is further information in your notes. Let's consider another Schedule 1 Part 2 condition with an example. Paragraph 8 concerns processing for the purposes of monitoring equality of opportunity or treatment. It must be with a view to enabling such equality to be promoted or maintained. There is more to this condition. For example, it lists the specified categories of personal data it applies to. There are also various exceptions given. For example, the controller cannot rely on this condition if the processing is likely to cause damage or distress to an individual. So how does it work in practice?
An employer like the ICO might process special category data about its employees. This might be racial and ethnic data or data about religious beliefs and the intention is to monitor equality of opportunity across the organisation. The Article 6 lawful basis might be legal obligation. The condition for processing is Article 9.2G substantial public interest with reliance on Schedule 1 Paragraph 8 equality of opportunity or treatment. Many of the substantial public interest conditions only apply if there is a good reason why a controller cannot get valid explicit consent for processing. As a general rule for these conditions, a controller should consider first whether it could give individuals a choice and only process their special category data with their explicit consent. However, there may be a good reason why a controller should not give individuals an upfront choice. For example, the condition at paragraph 18 is concerned with the processing of data for the safeguarding of children or individuals at risk. Asking for consent for the processing might prejudice the provision of the required protection, for example, protecting an individual from physical, mental or emotional harm. There is a list in the guidance which shows which conditions require the controller to justify why consent for the processing was not obtained from the data subject. We have now covered the 10 conditions for processing special category data in Article 9. Five of them are complete in the UK GDPR. These are conditions A and C to F. For the other five, the controller needs to identify and meet the specific requirements of a condition in Schedule 1 of the DPA. There are 23 possible substantial public interest conditions in Schedule 1 Part 2 for Condition G. Finally, an appropriate policy document is a short document outlining a controller's compliance measures and retention policies for special category data. An APD is required by almost all of the substantial public interest conditions and also for the employment, social security and social protection condition. This is the kind of information which should be outlined in an APD. For example, it includes the Schedule 1 condition or conditions the controller is relying on. The ICO has produced an APD template to help controllers meet this requirement. There are links to this template in the guidance. There is also a table showing which conditions require an APD. Don't forget to look at the guidance if you have any questions about the conditions. You have now completed Module 4, so you should now understand the requirements of Article 9, know where to find conditions for processing special category data, and understand how the conditions are applied in practice. And finally, there is further information on these topics in our guidance on our website and you will find the relevant links in your notes. There are more questions under all the headings in the detailed guidance, but this slide highlights some of the key questions for further reading. There are also useful answers to questions about special category data in the Knowledge Builder. Remember, this module is an introduction to special category data. It is important that you read the guidance and the further details in your notes. I hope you've enjoyed the module and that it's been useful for you. Thank you for listening.